I'm from a small town in Kentucky in the rolling hills. And 20 years ago, I graduated architecture school and decided I wanted to move to a big city to become a famous designer. So y'all know what I did? I packed up a U-Haul and I yee-hauled myself all the way to the Big Apple. Now, I'd been raised in a town of 2,000 people where everyone knew everyone and no one was a stranger. And then I found myself in this, a city of eight million strangers where bumping into people on the street they hardly said hello, much less excuse me. It didn't take me long to realize that breaking the ice with New Yorkers was not gonna be an easy task. And if I wanted to build my new Northern connection, I needed to get creative. So this is what I did. <laughs> I'd go out on the town a few nights a week with this very fake flashing Fisher Price microphone, and I'd interview intriguing party goers male or female, of any age, as to who are you, where are you from, and what's your state bird. And most people didn't know what their state bird was, but in the end, we were talking, we were laughing, and for some reason, everybody wanted to talk into this toy. So I made all kinds of connections, and it was funny. And, you know, I had forgotten I'd done that 20 years ago, and a good friend of mine had posted on her Facebook wall almost a month ago about having met me through this silly gesture. And then that Facebook post lit up about all the people that had also met me through this microphone. And I realized by putting myself out there in this unique way, I had made an unforgettable connection. So after figuring out how to break the ice in New York, let's fast forward 15 years later. I was out to dinner with an architectural colleague one night, and he spotted an attractive woman. And he scribbled on the back of his business card, when I have dinner, and he slid that to a woman as we were leaving the restaurant. And I remember looking back, coming up with this light bulb. He left with a date, and I left with an idea. This idea led me to build a dating business called Cheeked, where I'm giving people a, a way to use a tool to make ice-breaking connections all over the world. I left my career in architecture. I've built Cheeked for four years, and I've got customers all over the world using this tool. And in the midst of me building this business, it became more than just a business. It became my mission. And it became my mission because while building this, I watched technology basically rip the words, hello, out of our vocabulary. I've been out watching people left and right at bars, and I spotted these three attractive women not too long ago at a bar looking down at their phones, and I realized they're on a dating app, flipping through profiles of people to look for a date at this bar, and ultimately, the irony was that there were so many men in that bar that one of them just flipped their hair or made eye contact, they could have found a date right in front of them. You know, where is our focus anymore? I feel like everyone's constantly looking down at their phones. Whether we're in the subway, everyone's looking down. And when you're walking down a New York City sidewalk, you can either dodge these people, or what I do is I stand there and let them walk right into me where it's a wake-up call to let them know that there's a human being right in front of them. So I can't say that I'm not guilty of this myself. I do love this thing. I love a lot of games on here, and I love staying connected. But a couple of summers ago, I was out to a crab shack in Montauk, and I was desperately trying to play my Words with Friends matches while I was waiting for my friends to arrive. And there's no signal in the Hamptons on AT&T if you've ever been out there. So I tossed my phone in my bag, and as soon as I removed my face from the screen of my phone and put my face into someone else's eyes, there was a hot man in front of me who said, nice tattoos. And he's here two years later in this audience to support me to this day. <laughs> and hopefully it will be <laughs> a connection that will last a lifetime. So technology is not going anywhere, as we know. It's a fantastic tool that's kept us more connected than ever. But I do see it becoming the brutal landscape that's removing the most important connection, which is all about real life. So while in our everyday, it's much easier to do this, it's much safer to do this, than to do this, I encourage you all today to sometimes just take a look up and see everything that's going on around you. You never know who you might meet if you just try to break the ice with a total stranger. And in this room today, we're surrounded by so many fascinating people at TEDx Fulton Street. I would challenge you, before you leave today, 
to break the ice with three or four strangers, and I'd actually like to get you to start doing that right now. If you turn to your neighbor, someone you don't know, and ask them where they're from and what their state bird is. And I hope it's a connection you'll never forget. Thank you.